Hello everyone and welcome to Pyandance Mods. This is Otaku Showboat and today we will be discussing hot air. It's about time. If you are enjoying the updated tutorials as well as normal tutorials for the Pi Suite uh, thus far, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you are so inclined, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash otaku so go over there to leave a follow to be notified when I go live on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to approximately 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. You can do all of the social stuff through the links below the video, uh, including supporting Pyanodon's mods development at patreon.com slash Pyanodon and myself at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. So, hot air was overhauled. Uh, relatively recently, completely changed in both how it's used as well as how it's made. This video is going to primarily discuss how it's made, but as for how it's used, uh, the, a lot of that is going to be discussed in the uh, actual plate processing videos, uh, metal plate processing videos, but overall, hot air went from being used to improve output of plates from solids to improving output from plates from molten fluids so and the and the benefits have been made to be consistent across the board of 25 percent you gain 25 percent rounded up so in circumstances where you would get only one item out you'll get two items out if you add hot air to it, as is the case with the initial glassware type recipes. Uh, that's just how the game works, just it it rounds up uh, any, uh, any floating point value for uh, an object that needs to be a whole number, right? Yeah, you either have one or you have two. You don't have 1.25 of uh, a thing, so it, it will always, always round up. Now, that's very powerful, to say the least, and it means that hot air is going to be incredibly useful uh, in your base going forward. But how it's made has been changed. You may you may notice there's a there's a few there's a few things here, but at the very beginning of the game, you have access to this. What is this? This is the destruction of stone bricks to make hot air. Previously you used to have access to a recipe that makes hot stone bricks from stone bricks. And the hot air that used the hot stone bricks recipe would return stone bricks. Just this recipe, basically. It would make hot air from hot stone bricks and return the stone bricks, and then you could convert the stone bricks directly into hot stone bricks in an advanced foundry with just power. That is no longer the case. That is what has changed drastically. And we have always had this recipe that gives you hot stone air from stone bricks, but no one ever used it because the hot stone bricks was a way to loop stone bricks on site rather than having to bring stone bricks in and lose something in the process. So, now in the early game, you have to do this. I highly recommend doing this because of the, that 25% that gain is just too good it, by comparison. It, 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 is, it is absolutely worth spending stone slash stone bricks for hot air with this recipe. It will always be worth doing like without question always worth doing because stone is pretty ubiquitous you you will always have stone to make stone bricks for the for the hot air like if if you don't have enough stone what are you doing like are are you kidding uh you should absolutely have plenty of stone for making hot air Heck, you probably have enough stone byproducts to make enough hot air, but anyway. Although, eh, it can't. In, in some cases, I can see it not actually being quite enough, but you can add it to what you're bringing in to make the stone bricks with the hot air. Now, the ability to loop stone bricks still exists. 
the ability to loop the stone bricks still exists in a different form. So you're going to have to actually heat stone bricks. Now the first thing that you'll get access to is this warm stone brick recipe that will give you hot air. How does one get warm stone bricks? Well, at the very early game, the very early game, you will need to have 250 degree or higher coke oven gas to heat your stone bricks into warm stone bricks that you can then extract the hot air from as hot air. You are basically converting coke oven gas into hot air in this process while being able to loop your stone bricks. Now, this also outputs a 100 degree coke oven gas that in the red science phase of the game you will not be able to do anything with yet outside of maybe using it to make sin gas and flu gas cuz that's that's a recipe that you can that you have at some point to convert coke oven gas into something else something else usable now how does one get 250 degrees C or higher coke oven gas at Red Science? This is a new recipe that has been added into the game. That is this recipe. It's not really that it's new, but it's been updated. So at Red Science, you have a recipe that converts in a high pressure furnace coal into coke. This used to be a one to one ratio of coal into coke, like five to five. It is now 5 to 4 of coal into coke. It is identical fuel value in as out, and you get 250C coke oven gas to make warm stone bricks out of. And then you have to figure out what you want to do with the 100C uh, coke oven gas that is output from this. You will need to consistently supply coke oven gas at this point phase of the game so you need to make sure that this process constantly moves without fail for as long as you need hot air in order to get an extra 50 units of hot air per cycle an extra 50 units per cycle and note that the cycle is at two seconds versus three on here and this has crafting speed one just just note that, so that you don't have to spend stone bricks. So, what's what are you doing here? You are spending coke oven gas rather than stone bricks for doing this. And it increases the amount of hot air that you get out overall. You, you can make more faster from it. That's it. That's all. That's That's all you get out of it. Now... At the next tech level, you will get a warmer stone brick recipe. Now, this is at Green Science. You will get a warmer stone brick recipe, and you will have access to coke oven gas that is 500 degree Celsius or higher. This is your standard red hot coke processing. This is your standard red hot coke processing, converting, converting coal into red hot coke that uh, outputs coke oven gas. You can also go the route of the hot residual mixture to get the coke oven gas. Well, what's hot residual mixture? Well, you get that by combining coke with residual mixture that you get out of your distillate processing of, uh, well, you get that from residual oil plus ash plus steam, and then residual oil is from distillates from either crude oil or crude oil with coke oven gas or uh, from tar or tar with coke oven gas so distillates the pie sweet distillates processing uh, note that this is actually the the coke oven gas ones here are actually worth considering as a means of using the coolest of coke oven gas instead of just voiding it because it will improve your outputs by 50% across the board. 
by doing this, which is just amazing. Uh, definitely, it's a it's a thing for consideration. It is a thing for consideration. Um, but but let's let's get into now what happens from here. So this needs 500 C or higher coke oven gas in. We went on how to how to initially get that 500 C coke oven gas. This will get this will give you warmer stone bricks from warm stone bricks so you need to have warm stone bricks this is why it says that the that the warm stone bricks are 250c or higher you can use 500c coke oven gas to make some initial warm stone bricks from stone bricks to then feed into the warmer stone bricks that's using 500c coke oven gas this outputs 250c coke oven gas it outputs the coke oven gas at the exact same temperature that you need for the previous step so that's the loop here you have you have a hundred units in per cycle of 500c coke oven gas going to 100 units in of 250c coke oven gas to convert stone bricks to warm stone bricks warm stone bricks to warmer stone bricks and then they get used in here to give you hot air and it returns stone bricks cold stone bricks to begin the process over again it loops the stone bricks and you end up with 100 c coke oven gas now what can you do with 100 c coke oven gas well as it turns out if you have access to regenerative heat exchangers which you're not going to for a good long time. If I can find that building in here. Uh, it is It is here. It needs circuit twos to make. I, I am pretty certain that the regenerative heat exchanger requires circuit twos to build it. If I can find that building here. Yes, it requires complex circuit boards. Red circuits. Right there. There it is. That's all the stuff you need. So that's going to be a while. Uh, not at Green Science, per se, before you get access to, the, access to this. This recipe I consider somewhat superfluous because of that. Uh, because when you have Blue Science, you're probably not going to be sticking to Coke Oven Gas anymore. There is a, a caveat to this. If you do want to reheat your Coke Oven Gas, you have to have... Hunt the 100 degree coke oven gas or lower, which I mean it's going to be or equal to. It's going to be it's going to be 100. That's your input here. 100, 100 C coke oven gas. You need 500 C or higher combustion mixture, which is a lot of power, which is a lot of power. And then, and then, you're not even getting all of your coke oven gas out. You only get 95 units back at 500C, not the full 100. So this isn't actually looping at all your coke oven gas. It loops most of it, not all of it. So you still need to keep it topped up either way, which means you still need to maintain your infrastructure for making coke oven gas at 500C to keep this moving. And you permanently lose that combustion mixture. You permanently lose that combustion mixture and all of the power that that combustion mixture could ever make. Right? That's a lot of power even at 500C combustion mixture. Which the only useful combustion mixture recipes, the cheapest ones are going to be actually higher temperature than 500 c but regardless that's a significant amount of power that you completely destroy by doing this uh, in my humble opinion because of the power that you lose access to by using combustion mixture for reheating across the board it is not ever 
even remotely going to be viable as a thing that you will ever do. You will never, ever want to spend combustion mixture in this way if you go through the effort of making combustion mixture. It is for power. And the one other thing that we'll get access to at some point in the future that will use combustion mixture that is not currently available but will at some point be, and I'll have videos about that as well. This is not it. Do, don't, don't consider this. This is a trap. This, this is a trap in its current state as of this particular video. Reheating is a trap. If in the future reheating changes to not use combustion mixture, but something actually vi viable, like steam at 500C or higher, that might be more viable. It's just you lose too much fuel value out of, you, you, lo you lose too much electricity out of this use of combustion mixture. It's, it's way too high. Way, 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 way too high. It is less expensive to maintain your infrastructure and provide the whole amount of uh, 100 units of coke oven gas. It is, it is by far cheaper to maintain your coke oven gas infrastructure than to spend your combustion mixture on this, in my humble opinion. In my opinion, it, now, of course, I could be wrong in the instance of coke oven gas. It, it might actually be that the amount of combustion mixture used, the 50 units here, is insignificant. By comparison to being able to reduce your production infrastructure of the coke oven gas at 500C by 95%. It might be that it's a wash at coke oven gas. That, I don't think, will be the case when it gets to the top end. Now, at Blue Science, let's, let's get into the, the final phase here, which will be the production of hot stone bricks. Hot stone bricks will no longer be coke oven gas. You will no longer be using coke oven gas because you are forced to use 1000C Outlet Gas 4. Outlet Gas 4 is made by further processing coke oven gas to get up to that Outlet Gas Stage 4. You go from coke oven gas with nickel and copper cables with organic solvent and acid gas and tall oil to get into this Outlet Gas Stage 4. You are spending all of this stuff all of this stuff is spent to get into Outlet Gas Stage 4. However, the output here is gigantic for the actual uh, for the actual hot air. The actual hot air output is huge. Huge for using the hot stone bricks to make the hot air. Now, this uses 1000C. It makes 750C Outlet Gas Stage 4. That will then go into the previous step, just like before, to make uh, the warmer stone bricks from warm uh, that go into the hot, warmer into hot. Uh, this will convert 750C output from hot stone bricks into 500C, which will be the input into here on the first step, converting your stone bricks into warm stone bricks, and it will output 250C outlet gas stage 4. We are going to basically ignore the existence of being able to make outlet gas stage 4 at 250C into 750C. Uh, this is... Y y no. No. Uh, again, it's, it's like, wh why would you loop it he here? Right? Like, wh why would you... Why would you... Why, why? Why would you loop it here rather than go the hot... the hot stone bricks? I mean, it's fine if, you all, if all you want to do is just keep the warm stone brick, the warmer stone bricks, and use the outlet gas. I mean, I, I guess, I guess that's a that's a thing you can do. But I would consider that more expensive than even just the regular coke oven gas. Quite, quite potentially, 
quite potentially. So what we're going to end up with are these two regenerative heat exchanger recipes. And just for reference, if I put like an outlet gas stage 4 or 300 units, uh, it's one-to-one -one conversion coke oven gas into outlet gas. And you can see the stuff that gets used here when you don't have modules installed of any type. Uh, slash not using any productivity or any of that. You can't under normal circumstances, but my, my point. Also, sulfur much? Sul sulfur? Sulfur much? And also aromatics much? This is actually a really good way of getting aromatics. Uh, for basically nothing. It's a, it's a pretty good way of getting aromatics from basically nothing, but let's look, let's actually look at 100. So we can be like, hey, if I want 500 uh, hot air per second, 500 hot air per second from those, from those 20 hot stone bricks, from those, from those 20 hot stone bricks per second, that's going to be 100 outlet gas per second. Of stage four at a thousand C. This does output thousand C. You can see there in the tooltip thousand C uh, temperature at like gas four. You are spending a nickel plate, a plate and a half of copper cables, less with productivity because that's one of the things that does absolutely use productivity. Uh, 50 organic solvent per second, which grand scheme is not that much. Acid gas 50 per second, again, grand scheme, not that much. Uh, and t 50 tall oil, again, grand scheme of things, not that much tall oil, though getting it is a little bit of a pain, even at 50 units per second. The these things are relatively insignificant on their outputs for this phase of the game. For this phase of the game, where you might be considering starting to do this at blue science. Like, it, there are really good ways uh, to get these three things at the level of science that you're at right now, at, at minimum blue science, but you might actually be waiting on this a little bit beyond blue, but anyway. It's also going to give you more sulfur than you'll ever know what to do with, as well as a whole bunch of aromatics. A, a whole bunch of aromatics uh, in this process. So, yeah, you get a bunch of useful stuff. <laughs> like, you can you can use this sulfur and aromatics... Like you can you can use these two things. These are these are somewhat useful things, right? Somewhat somewhat useful things. This whole thing right here, this whole this whole thing, this whole conversion, 2.3 megawatts. 2.3 megawatts, right? To make this 100 units from 100 units of coke oven gas and however much fuel value is used to make the coke oven gas, we'll look at the uh, the red hot coke processing. We it's 40 coal. It's 40 coal per second, plus uh, the extra solid fuel to go into the basic oxygen furnace. It's 40 coal per second. That's a, that's a lot, right? You, know, you, you, th you think that's a lot. That's 40 times 4 uh, megajoules. It's 160 megajoules. Or in this case, if we're looking at everything in per seconds, it's 162 Point three megawatts, 162.3 megawatts of power here. Uh, ignoring that this 10 red hot coke can further be converted into coke, right? That's that's ig ignoring that, like that that's that's a, assuming we would somehow void this red hot coke rather than convert it into coke. Uh, if you convert it into coke, you're gonna end up with a, a lot uh, a lot of stuff now the way that this is set up is that uh yeah the, uh, what where are you getting 24 from <sighs> helmod 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 it's there's probably something in the products ah uh, yeah for, it's trying to do the 400 steam uh yeah that it was it was trying it was trying to do the 400 C team really it was, it was it was it was it was attempting to do the uh, to do the steam but anyway that is that is that I I don't know what Helmont's trying to do here the the whole prioritization thing has seemed broken from the very beginning 
from the uh, for the ability to set a master output uh, in Helmod. It it just it doesn't work all that well. But you you get my point. Is that this red hot coke can be converted into coke, and there's your fuel value back, a gain of fuel value, not a loss of fuel value. However, you do need to keep this moving, so you do have to be spending that fuel value at some point in some way, either voiding this red hot coke or voiding the coke output from here just to keep this moving. And red hot coke does have other uses for uh, archods uh, in particular, so you're either going to use it, lose it, or convert it. But it's still a valuable substance that is that is output here. So let us not let us let us not ignore this ten red hot coke, and let us not ignore the thirty the thirty uh, sulfur that we get here, and the three hundred aromatics that we get here. Let's also not ignore the fact that it's fifty tall oil, fifty acid gas, fifty organic solvent, a plate and a half of copper, and a plate of nickel. Let's let's not ignore this and let's say for the sake of argument that we're using 162.3 megawatts my point's going to still stand in this somewhat worst case scenario my point is going to still stand so that's to make 100 units right at 100 100 units that's 2.2.3 megawatts 162.3 megawatts well what if we want to reheat this at the very end we're going to end up with a 250C uh, outlet gas. What if we want to reheat it up to 1000C? What do we need? We need 100 units of 1000C combustion mixture. We need 100 units. 100 units of 1000C combustion mixture. So if we, if we look at the uh, combustion mixture... There is only one recipe that gives you 1000 C combustion mixture for that that exists in the pie suite. There's only one, only one, and we need a hundred of it consistently. It is going to consume coal briquettes, which it's your choice on what you want to use to get the coal briquettes. I mean, technically this glycerol, coal dust, creosote tar, I think is best. That's a lot of coal dust. What I ratios, ratios, ratios. That's uh thirty-five into ten. That's five to one. That's not five to one in the slightest. And that's ten to one. So yeah, this this would be the best I think in the fuel value ratios, at least in the solid fuel ratios. It's petroleum, so you have to get petroleum somehow. You somehow have to get petroleum, which, if you're doing tall oil, you might have the light oil to convert through this sulfur recipe. Just, just gonna throw that idea out there. But I think grand scheme, most would do this recipe. I, I think most would do this recipe with the little bit of aromatics and hydrogen and tin chromium alloy. And you need refined syngas, which, you know, similar similar problems. Uh, let's see, that would be this if you're going to do the distillates processing. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you plan on doing distillates processing, a little bit of gasoline with high distillates gets you uh, condensed and then more tin chromium alloy into refined syngas. Low values, right? Low values? I, I, th I think we can agree. Low values. We don't really have to think too much about the actual making of this 1000C combustion mixture. It, it's fine. Like, you can, you can make this. It's actually pretty... It is actually pretty simple. That is a... That is a thing I have said in the past that I thought it was a little bit too much to make this. It, no. I, I was wrong. This is pretty easy to make. Grand scheme of things. But, a thousand C combustion mixture at the blue science phase of the game. 
Let's think about that briefly. Mark II combustion turbines is what you'll have access to at this phase of the game, right? At least Mark II combustion turbines. If you're at Blue Science. Later, you'll also have Mark III combustion turbines. So, 1000C gives you full output of available power of these combustion turbines. The full 51 or 56.1 megawatts. 56.1 megawatts from 60 per second. 56.1 is 60 per second. If we're using 100 per second, that's 93.5 megawatts of consumption of power on Mark II combustion turbines. Mark III's, you're looking at over 130 megawatts of power, because that's 90 per second per turbine, if you extrapolate that out. Uh, it would be 144.4. Gee, that's a pretty close value to that 162, right? That's that's pushing it towards that 162, right? That we that we have used. That's pushing it. So we lose all of this, 100, to get 500 megawatts of combustion mixture. That's really pushing it, isn't it? That's really pushing it. And you only get 95 back. So you still have to maintain the previous infrastructure. Instead of, instead of 100, we still need 5. Which means we're still using a, a little bit of power. We're still losing the fuel value of coal. Quote unquote losing the fuel value of coal. But again, remember what I said. We are not exactly losing any of this coal fuel value even if we have the full hundred out it is that is worst case scenario where we are voiding red hot coke right that is the absolute worst case scenario where we are voiding red hot coke which means we are incredibly backed up on coke at that point i would imagine that the only way you're going to be backed up on Red Hot Coke is if you're backed up on Coke itself, in which case you are overproducing, at which point you're laughing because you don't really care about any of these fuel values anymore, right? It, the fuel values ultimately don't matter too much from here. So, are you going to spend... 1000C combustion mixture after going through the effort of making it in the first place on reheating this stuff when in the later phases of the game you could make a hundred and what was it a hundred and forty four point four megawatts of power off of that same hundred that you would lose here off that same hundred combustion mixture that you would lose here per second on top of then having to make another five units of outlet gas per second consistently. So do you, do you get do you get my point here? It's like you you have to maintain this infrastructure anyway to a degree. Granted you don't need all the as many buildings, but you still go through the logistics of making it in the first place. You still go through the logistics of doing it in the first place, and if you're building to be able to easily scale, it makes no difference how many you build, how many buildings you place in the end. And and, you're, and even then, at Mark II, it's even fewer buildings anyway to just have the full hundred. So unless you're really starving for the organic solvent and acid gas and tall oil, which if you're going to make it the... If you're going to go through the effort of making the outlet gas in the first place, you already have sufficient amounts of this stuff anyway. Right? It's like there, there's effectively not as much difference between 5 and 100. I would always choose any day, any day of the week to just use my combustion mixture for power. I would always use it for power. Always. Always. Like there's... If I'm going through that effort... 
to make the, the Thousand C, if I'm going through the effort of having Glycerol and Creosote and Tar and the Tin Chromium Alloy and all the distillate processing stuff with gasoline as well to, to make all this stuff, or however I decide to make these individual products or ingredients for this Thousand C, if I go through the effort of all of this logistics work to get this stuff, because this is a significant amount of logistics work, I'm using it for power. I'm using it for power. I'm not using it for reheating of an outlet gas, where I'm still going to lose five outlet gas, no matter what. And I have to maintain that infrastructure anyway. The only way that this would be useful is if you actually get the full hundred back and not have to have that infrastructure, period, after you make the initial amounts to feed this. But you can't. And that's the problem. Hot air went from being a thing that you can place anywhere and loop stuff in to a more complex system that, regardless of wherever you place it, you will always need something in. You will always need some sort of input in for hot air, which means that it is now basically impossible to just place it and set it and forget it. You have to dedicate a build for it build it, and train it, or you have to ship it out wherever you're going to use it. That is the current state of hot air. Like, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, even if you heat it, reheat it, and you spend combustion mixture, you, you somehow manage to make combustion mixture wherever you're doing your hot air. God help you with all of the logistic stuff to do the reheating and making the combustion mixture. Like, it's it's just it's uh, it, 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 it's big right it's it's big no matter what you do and that's just for 500 units per second right we're here looking at the 100 unit scale of the of the level four outlet gas the stage four outlet gas well that's just that's just 500 hot air using the hot stone brick method you're going to need a lot more than that grand grand scheme again grand scheme of things uh, you need a lot. You need you need a lot. Just Pandons is a mod about a lot of stuff. It's a it's a it's a set of mods about processing tar, but in the end, it's going to use a lot of other stuff besides just the tar. So, yeah, yeah. So you know my thoughts, my thought my thoughts exactly. There is I personally. I'm never going to spend combustion mixture on anything other than power unless I am forced to to complete the game. Which is going to be something like that at some point in the future. But for now, if it's a completely optional thing, I'm not going to use it to reheat this gas. Sorry, there's there's just there's not enough of a significance of gain by doing this power-wise. Now, if you are really interested in being as efficient as you possibly can be, yes. The technical answer is that, yes, reheating power-wise is better overall from a very technical, clinical standpoint if you're willing to put in the effort of doing all of the logistics work associated with that, go ahead. I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Not in a million years. Because I recognize that the outputs from this are very useful as well. We have 30 sulfur here and 300 aromatics that we can use for every 100 outlet gas that we make. Like, these are useful things for other stuff having dedicated builds to make this much sulfur and aromatics separately that's power too that you have to consider you have to consider what is the what is the trade-off what is the opportunity costs what are the opportunity costs how how much more power would i spend making aromatics through a separate process how much more power would I spend making sulfur through a separate process? And how much power would I gain if I make this into coke? 
and use that Coke consistently. Can my base support using this Coke consistently? Can I prioritize the use of this Coke from this Red Hot Coke to make power over other sources of power? Yes, you absolutely can do that. You can absolutely do that. And, and, it gives you a whole bunch of coal dust. You get a whole bunch of coal dust as well when you process Red Hot Coke into Coke. Let's not forget that. And guess what one of the main ingredients is on the coal briquettes? To make 1000C combustion mixture. It's, it's, coal, it's coal dust. It, it's, it's coal dust. As well as tar and more tar in the form of creosote and a little bit of the glycerol, which... Yeah, it depends. What, what, whatever you want to do to get the to get the glycerol. I think most people are going to have it as a byproduct of oleochemicals at at this phase of the game. But you you could do skin and sodium hydroxide if you've got skin. More likely than not, you have lard and are already making oleochems. So sure, sure, just route some glycerol into into briquettes, and there there you go. There's your there's your briquettes for your stuffs for your combustion mixture, just figure out what you're going to do with the, with the petroleum gas and the refined syngas, and you're fine! You've got a whole bunch of power then, on top of the power that you've gotten from the processing of the coal into coke through red hot coke processing. Like, I see this is a great use of the coke oven gas byproduct of a primary coal to coke build that you're doing. Something that you have that's constantly moving that you've built to be constantly moving without really having the need to void this, uh, that, then this shines, right? This shines. This is absolutely... We can ignore this 160 megajoules leaving because we're using it through the coke, and it's actually making more fuel value for us out of, out of this 160. So by doing that red-hot coke processing into coke, in which case then this ends up being free. Right? We end up making more power out of doing this than the power we use to do this. So, yeah, that that's my overall thoughts on this. I don't see the point of reheating uh, outside of just clinical, it's more efficient to do this because it you you if you void this stuff, in the one case where you just void the red-hot coke, it's more efficient just to reheat. But if you're not voiding that red hot coke, if you're if you're not voiding it at all, and you're using that fuel value, and you're using the sulfur, and you're using the aromatics, yeah, don't reheat. If you have uses for those other products, don't reheat. And I think most people are going to have uses for those other products. Granted, sulfur is extremely easy to get. Aromatics not so much in the current state of high alien life. I would say that the aromatics alone are worth it if you're using those aromatics. So, yeah, that's 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 the thing. And I've now spent over 40 minutes going over this debate because it is a debate and it's a good discussion to have and it's a good argument to make for both sides of the equation. I hope I have at least presented both sides of the argument for and against, although I am very clearly against doing reheating at the red hot coke stage i think the coke oven gas has a better argument at that phase of the game where you're doing the warmer stone bricks potentially though we didn't look at that very specifically today the the middle one here is just laughable no never 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 ever gonna be worth doing that particular one, honestly, I I wouldn't even bother doing the math on that. It's just, just no, this this doesn't this doesn't exist. This this doesn't exist. That this one this one exists, and this one could be useful in a circumstance where you plan on voiding all the stuff. If your intention is to void all of those aromatics and all of those sulfur units and all of those red hot cokes, especially all of those red hot cokes. If, if the plan is voiding everything, sure. 
Reheat. Go ahead. Reheat it. That's the only circumstance where it's going to be better for you to reheat. Technically. Otherwise, otherwise, I don't see it. I, I would rather make power. And I think even regardless, even if I was voiding all of the stuff, why would I bother adding a reheating thing? Why would I bother waste taking my time to add a reheating setup with the making of the 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 moving of that thousand C combustion mixture to do a reheating of this? Like if I I've already would have built it at that point already a, a setup that makes the hundred units of thousand C outlet gas why why would i add even more logistics complexity to this system later on down the line like no just no even 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 if i find it find that i am actually voiding all these things slash i have to void all these things to keep it moving still can't see doing that logistics it just it just seems like a waste of time to me to Compared to everything else that you need to do in the pie suite, taking the time to do this just it it doesn't sit well with me. I I I don't I wouldn't spend my time doing it. I would make power. I I would make power. I wouldn't make the thousand C combustion mixture to begin with to make my power, but that's another discussion for another time. Uh, I would I pro I likely would just not do thousand C combustion mixture to even make my power in the first place and try to avoid having to make it in the first place but yeah that uh in the in the theoretical where I've made thousand C combustion mixture I'm going to use it for power that's that's me you can do what you want to do if you want to do this reheating stuff you can go ahead and do so I'm not going to do it I I refuse I I refuse I, I will not do it. I will gladly spend the full amount of Atlas Gas 4 rather than get 95 units back. Uh, and as I said, in my honest opinion, this should not be combustion mixture. This should be steam at various temperatures, and we can have methods of making steam higher than 500C. We can have we can have methods of making steam at higher than 500C. Cough, cough. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We can, we can have methods of getting higher temperature than 500C steam, which is requiring a fuel rod. And we can, you know, get cooler steam back out of this as well this regenerative heat exchanger we could also output a cooler steam alternatively we could output a cooler combustion mixture why do we even have to spend a full hundred units of thousand c combustion mixture when we can get something a bit cooler back there's there's lots of ways that this can be improved to make this objectively the best option for you but until that happens right now there are really good arguments for and against using the reheating system which is by intention most likely i'm i'm pretty sure that's intentional like the intention so yeah that's hot air i i do hope i haven't confused too many people with with any of this presentation of stuff it's a lot of theory a lot of, a lot of theory and a lot of various scenarios in which case one would be better than another one thing would be better than another which process to use whether or not to do reheating of gases but grand scheme the very the very basics you could always just spend stone bricks through the entirety of the game and be fine like you can totally spend hundreds upon hundreds of stone bricks to make as much hot air as you need for your entire base 
that is an option. That is especially an option if you are if you are playing Pi Block, where you can just place stone production anywhere for stone bricks and actually have hot air on demand by doing this this way. You can essentially have hot air on demand using this recipe in Pi Block because you can make stone bricks all on demand. And let's not forget that this entire process here is simply so that we don't have to spend stone bricks. Right? Like, part of it is that we do won't spend stone bricks doing any of this progressive heating of stuff. But also, it, it, it does improve output. Like, it, 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 by doing this, it improves the output of the hot air per unit brick. But is it actually worth the spending of the gases by comparison to just spending bricks? That is something that you will have to decide for yourself as well as how far up the chain you want to go. Maybe you just want to permanently stick with warm stone bricks. Maybe you just want to permanently stick with warmer stone bricks. Not even go the effort, the extra mile to do the processing of outlet gas for... Maybe you just don't want to touch outlet gas for ever. Because it's only use is here, effectively. Maybe you just don't want to go through that effort of setting up a processing of coke oven gas into outlet gas for. Maybe you want to just reheat coke oven gas. Maybe that's just a thing you want to do. It's a thing you can do. Is it the most efficient thing that you can do? No. But you can still do it. No one's no one's forcing you to be the most efficient at everything that you do. Uh, in Factorio, no one's no one's forcing your hand to do things the most efficient way. I do hope that I am not forcing you to do things the most efficient way. I I I would hope that I am actually advocating the opposite to not do things in the most efficient way. I I would hope that that's actually what I, what my voice is advocating here is to not do things in the most efficient, theoretical, most efficient way. But uh, I am now, I am now ranting and raving far more than I originally anticipated. With that, folks, we are done with our hot air processing overview video. I would like to very much thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Showboat. Uh, if you have been enjoying the tutorial videos thus far, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and if you are so inclined, I do stream on twitch.tv slash otaku showboat, so you can go over there to leave a follow to be notified when I go live on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to approximately 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. You can do all of the social stuff through the links below the video, including supporting Planadon's mods development at patreon.com slash planadon and myself at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. I will, of course, be back next time with another tutorial. I will see you all then. Mm -hmm.